After a season-high 90 points on Thursday against San Jose State, the Aggies will be looking to continue the scoring spree tonight as first place Utah State comes to town hoping to avoid the upset. It's a battle of the Aggies next on Aggie Vision. It's been six weeks since New Mexico State has won back-to-back -back games, but it will have a chance to do just that tonight against the WAC leaders from Utah State. New Mexico State broke out of a nine-game skid on Thursday night over San Jose State with a 20-point victory. Utah State is at the top of the WAC standings thanks to eight consecutive victories. With the former New Mexico standout Melanie Viramontes, I'm Jay Sanderson. We're glad you're with us tonight. New Mexico State exploded for 90 points in that win two nights ago. The most that Aggies have scored in 11 seasons against a Division I opponent, Melanie. How were they able to do it? Well, they just ran the offense the best they have all season long. They moved without the ball. They had 24 assists off of 34 baskets, and they made the open shots, which has basically been the bane of the Aggies' existence these last few weeks. But they were 47% from the field, and they made 15 three-pointers. It was also the return of the real Denasia Williamson. New Mexico State sophomore point guard had been in a pretty nasty slump, but she had her best game of the season, 19 points and 10 assists. How was she able to do it? Well, Williamson returned to what she did so well earlier in the season, which is to run the offense and execute the offense, get people open. She was also making smart decisions when it came to her own looks. She made some good opportunities for herself and teammates, and she's as close to perfect as Coach Track could ask for. Utah State extended its winning streak with a buzzer-beating double overtime win at Denver thanks to the game-winning shot made by Devin Christensen. She's the WAC's second leading scorer. What is it about her that allows her to put up 20 points a night? Well, Christensen's just a great three-point shooter. She has incredible range, but she can also drive into the paint and create opportunities for her teammates, which allows others to, to have opportunities. So Christensen's just a great all-around player. New Mexico State leads the all-time series, but Utah State has won the last five, including the first game this season on a last-second shot. New Mexico State aims for consecutive wins for the first time in a month and a half, and if it does so, it'll break Utah State's eight-game winning streak. It's the Battle of the Aggies here in Las Cruces. We'll get it started for you next. cell phones. He just got a new phone and he can't stop using it. Boom! Profile pic. Do you guys need a moment? Since John is always on his phone, we thought he'd like using Wells Fargo mobile banking. Just pay the electric bill? Wow. He's able to pay his bills, check his balance. Wow. Even transfer money between accounts. I can tell you what's playing here if you like. Um, I can tell you too. See? Mm. Wells Fargo, with you when life is mobile. At the end of the day, you can't fool people. Nothing sells like the truth. From our fresh pack sauce, to our fresh veggies, to our 100% fresh dough, never frozen. At Papa John's, we believe fresh is better. Nobody does, but Papa John's does. Right now, Papa John's is giving you all large pizzas for just $11 each. Even specialty pizzas, only $11. Order now at PapaJohns.com. Everything's better when Papa's in the house. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. <laughs> The Moody Blues. The voyage continues. Highway 45. Friday, March 8th in Legends Theater at Route 66 Casino Hotel. An unforgettable night of the Moody Blues iconic hits performed live. For tickets, visit rt66casino.com or the casino box office. The voyage continues. Highway 45. Exclusive casino sponsor of Lobo Sports. It's a battle for Aggie supremacy as New Mexico State tries for back-to-back -back wins against Utah State, riding an eight-game winning streak here into Las Cruces. It's time now for a look at the starting lineups. Four conference leading Utah State, Jennifer Schlott, Jennifer, uh, Jenna Johnson, and Devin Christensen each scored 20 or better in the double overtime win over Denver on Thursday night. Jenna Johnson is a guard with post skills, and McKinley Williams made the three-pointer at the buzzer to give Utah State the win when these two teams met in mid-January. For New Mexico State, all five of the 
starters scored in double figures the last time out. Stephanie Gilbreth is the fifth best scorer in the WAC. Sasha Weber and Danasia Williamson have been pretty good of late in the post. It will be Camila Rosen and Kelsey Rosendahl. Mark Drack's team earned its 10th overall win and the fourth in the conference on Thursday night. Both of those an improvement over last season. Jerry Finkbeiner is in his first season with Utah State after a long and successful run as the head coach at Oral Roberts. That brings us to our keys to the game tonight. Melanie, how will New Mexico State try to win this one? Well, first off, they're going to need to keep the momentum and build on the confidence that they gained on Thursday night. They also want to move without the ball. Utah State is primarily a zone team, which plays to NMSU's advantage if they can be patient and run their offense. And last, they don't want to lose sight of Utah's shooters. They want to make sure they always know where they are and keep them in front. Utah State is the highest scoring team in the WAC, but they also give up the most points in the conference at the defensive end of the floor. New Mexico State is trying to stay hot after scoring a season high 90 points for head coach Mark Track. His brother is here tonight, Maz Track, an assistant coach with the Oklahoma City Thunder. He's on the bench with the Aggies tonight. We'll talk to him coming up at halftime. Our officials tonight, Peter Contreras, Charles Carroll, and Ron Harris. They'll be the ones who will keep an eye on the action out there tonight as New Mexico State, after scoring 90 points on Thursday night, will try to keep up the hot streak. Utah State wearing the navy blue. New Mexico State will wear the white here on the home floor. Just four conference games left for New Mexico State to try to get some momentum headed toward the WAC tournament over in the first part of March in Las Vegas. The Aggies have the ball to open the game. Well, and one difference the Utah State Aggies will see here in Las Cruces is that Kelsey Rosendahl is on the floor tonight. She did not play up in Utah, so that could be the difference between a one-point game. Sasha Weber missed that opening shot for New Mexico State. Utah State, a guard-dominant team. That's Devin Christensen, and she knocks down her first try from the field. Well, and the Aggies definitely can't allow her to have that much space to shoot the three. Rosendahl spins through the defense. Thompson defended it very well. New Mexico State with the offensive board, but it didn't hit the rim, so no reset on the shot clock. Williamson, though, from inside the paint. Well, the Aggies having good energy right off the bat. You see they're excited. They want to win this game. They know how close they were last time around. Back-to-back -back threes by Utah State. That was Jennifer Schlock, the junior guard, had 27 points. A 10 of 17 shooting night Thursday in the double overtime win at Denver. Gilbreth straight away. Christensen with the board for Utah State. The Blue Ags have won eight consecutive games entering tonight, which ties the 1975-76 Utah State team for the longest winning streak in school history. If they can beat New Mexico State tonight, it will set a new team record. Well, in Utah State, this is exactly what they like to do. They like to penetrate and try to dish off and get, get an open look. That ball was kicked out of bounds by New Mexico State. The shot clock will reset to 15 seconds. Christensen catches and shoots on the inbound. Offensive board to Elise Nelson, a 5'9 guard. She beat New Mexico State Sasha Weber for it. That one missing by Schlott. The rebound ping pongs off of both teams and it will end up with New Mexico State. Offensively on Thursday night against San Jose State, NMSU shot a season second best 46% from the field. They had shot 47% against Utah State early in the conference season. Williamson turns loose of one, and she made her first try, but missed her second one, and Utah State takes it back. During this eight-game winning streak for Utah State, four different players have averaged in double figures, including Franny Va'ulu, who will come off the bench. Christensen's already made one. She misses that one. Rosendahl grabs the board but gets it taken away. The jump ball forced by Elise Nelson for Utah State. The possession arrow points toward the Blue Aggies. Well, and that's what Nelson does so well. She's not so much looking for the shot, but she's a good rebounder. And as you see there, she's a hustler. Nelson more of a point guard, not much of a shooter. She gets it done on the glass as well. 
And that's a travel. Jenna Johnson, the Wasilla, Alaska native, took too many steps in the violation, gives it back to New Mexico State. Part of the plan for NMSU tonight is to attack. Utah State does not defend very well. We told you they were the worst in the whack. Mark Track wants to see his team get aggressive down inside the post with Rosendahl playing this time around. Nine to shoot for Camila Rosen. There's only five seconds on the clock, so Williamson's going to have to take this shot. The floater, you bet. And that was a good take by Williamson. That's usually what's going to happen. You want your point guard to have the ball when you're less than 10 seconds on the shot clock. Williamson has scored every point for New Mexico State, but Utah State is up on top by a pair. Well defended down in the post. The Aggies with the double team in the paint. They did that all night long against San Jose State's Rihanna Bird and caused her a lot of trouble on Thursday night. That was a big reason why the Aggies were able to create some offensive opportunities. The freshman Weber goes offhand with the left, gets her own rebound, and it will go back to Utah State. So there we see a familiar foe for New Mexico State struggling to finish right underneath the basket. Well, as we've said in the open, they've been struggling with their shooting. And, but uh, actually, that was a good take by Weber. She had to take it. She got the second rebound. It just didn't fall that time. Utah State has made two outside shots. That one nearly going down. Rosendahl with the rebound for New Mexico State. And that's exactly where Rosendahl is going to make a difference in this game. She had good position, and she comes out with the rebound. Rosendahl does not shoot a whole lot of three-pointers, but when she does, she is lethal. She knocks that one down. Just five three balls made in conference play, and she gives the Aggies of New Mexico State their first lead. Gilbreth, a little bit short on that one. Christensen with the rebound for Utah State. The first place team in the conference, Utah State, scores a lot of points, and there's a good high-low look. Gilbreth comes over with the foul. The first foul against Gilbreth and the first foul of the game. It's been an up-and-down affair. Utah State has used the long ball while New Mexico State has gone inside. We played just a shade over four minutes. New Mexico State with a 7-6 lead trying to take down the first place team in the WAC. Yates Petroleum Corporation in Artesia, New Mexico is a proud sponsor of the New Mexico State Aggies. Yates Petroleum is always developing for New Mexico's greatest resource, its people. Supporting education, employment opportunities, community development, and wise resource management. Yates Petroleum is helping New Mexico be a strong, economical place to live. Oil and gas is serving all of us well. Yates Petroleum, producing and exploring for oil and gas since 1923. It's teamwork that makes winners every time. New Mexico State Aggies and Yates Petroleum. The Las Cruces Sun News. It's where you live. Each and every day, we bring you more about your world. More pictures, more stories, more events, and more of the people who are part of life right here in all of southern New Mexico. Local news from your community and around the world. Sports, business, entertainment, classifieds, and lots more. The Sun News. More information you can use every day. Visit us online at lcsun-news.com. The Sun News. It's where you live. Utah State beat New Mexico State on a buzzer beater back on January 17th. It was a game New Mexico State controlled throughout, but in the game's final 11 seconds, NMSU missed the front end of a one and one twice, which gave McKinley Williams an opportunity to sink a three-point shot at the buzzer. Just the second three-point shot made in that game by Utah State, which gave the Blue Aggies the narrow victory on its home floor. Here, the New Mexico State Aggies with a seven to six lead early going. A couple of three-point shots for Utah State, and now a free throw there by Haley Thompson has tied it at seven apiece. 
couple of points or baskets inside for Denasia Williamson and a three-pointer by Kelsey Rosendahl has gotten the Aggies of New Mexico State on the board. Both free throws made there by Thompson, giving the Blue Ags a lead back up by one. Utah State for the first time showing a press against New Mexico State. Easily broken by the Aggies. Gilbreth missing the three. Kind of a sloppy transition game here for Utah State. They'll get settled into their half-court set. Goes to Franny Va'aulu at the top. Her brother Ogafa played football here at New Mexico State. She can't get the offense set up as Gilbert pokes it out of bounds. Well, and Va'aulu is a really good rebounder, and she's a strong finisher, so the Aggies have to make sure that they keep her in front of them. Mark Track truly satisfied with his team's early offensive spark. Three pretty good halves in a row for New Mexico State leading into this one. There's Va'aulu easy on the baseline, her first bucket. A fourth different player to score for Utah State in the game's first five minutes, and it's out to a three-point Blue Aggie lead. Williamson from 15. Not quite feeling it there from the top. Well, and Schlott is left-handed, so they really want to push her to the right. That's they don't. The they, Mexico State Aggies don't want her to have that left-handed layup. Vaulu on back-to-back -back possession scores. Mark Track not happy with the offensive stick back there by Utah State, and he'll take a quick timeout as the Blue Aggies go on top by five with 14-17 left in the first half. Well, and you see here. Utah State just has the open look with Baalu. And like, as I said earlier, she's a finisher. Not, not very often that she's going to miss that shot. Utah State opened the conference play one and two. They have been very, very good since. Eight consecutive victories leading into this one tonight. They've won 11 conference games, tying a school record for conference wins with last year's Utah State squad that went 11 and five in the last. They lead it 12 to seven here, coming out of the New Mexico State timeout. Mark Track's offense held a narrow seven to six lead, but Utah State has scored six in a row to go on top. And that one nearly taken away, saved in bounds, but then stepping on the line was Jenna Johnson. Well, and the Utah State Aggies uh -huh. like to steal, so New Mexico State wants to give a pump fake, get them to bite, and then make the easy pass. Utah State is third in the nation in steals, averaging better than 13 a game. That's how they get a lot of their easy points down inside. They do give up a lot in the half court set. Weber for three. Offensive rebound for New Mexico State. That's an area that the Aggies have really struggled in at times this season is to clean up the offensive glass. That's definitely a point of emphasis tonight here for Mark Track. Rosendahl somehow finds the bottom of the basket on that. She leads the Aggies with five points, and New Mexico State gets back within three. Well, that was a good look by Weber. She's getting double teamed, so she knew somebody was going to be open. Turnover. It was fumbled out of bounds by Crystal Turner, a big 6'3 guard who doesn't play a whole lot for Utah State. She came over to Utah State with Jerry Finkbinder. They both came from Oral Roberts after last season. Big, tall guard. She is 6'2", and she does play the outside. Rarely goes down in the post. She doesn't like a lot of contact. Three-point deficit for the homestanding New Mexico State squad wearing the white. High, low read. Gilbreth gets fouled as she goes up with it. She'll have a couple of cracks at it at the free throw line. First foul against Utah State. And get that one on Jenna Johnson, the senior guard. Well, Gilbert just gets sneaks by Johnson, gets right in front of her, and she has a nice look. Gilbert had a streak of five consecutive games with 15 points or better. Snap on Thursday night against San Jose State. But that's actually a good thing for New Mexico State because there have been a number of times this season where she was the only source of offense. Six players scored in double figures in that game, taking some of the heat off of Gilbert and allowed her to play a more relaxed style of basketball. Well, and that's, that's exactly what Coach Track has been aiming for, is to get other players to, to bring some, some offense to the New Mexico State Aggies. 
The freshman, Abby Scott, she had 17 the other night, and there with her first bucket, gives New Mexico State the lead back by a point. The eighth place New Mexico State Aggies on top of the first place Utah State Aggies here in Las Cruces. But the Blue Aggies go back on top thanks to Jenna Johnson. Well, and Gilbert, Gilbert did a good job defensively there because Johnson wasn't on the block. Gilbert pushed her up a little bit, so she wasn't exactly comfortable with that shot. Utah State gets another steal. That is their second of the game. Johnson then buries the triple, her first of the night. She now has five points, doing it all on back-to-back -back possessions, and it widens the gap back out to four. New Mexico State looking for back-to-back -back wins for the first time in six weeks, trying to sustain some offensive consistency. I played three pretty good halves coming into this one tonight. Abby Scott just does miss on that three-point try. And Va Ulu with the board for Utah State. Well, and they want to force Schlott right. NMSU has done pretty good scoring off of the turnovers. They did a really nice job of that on Thursday night. 31 points on Thursday night off of Utah, uh, San Jose State turnover. Scott, not bashful to shoot. There she cashes it in. Her first three ball of the night, and it's back to a one-point lead for Utah State. Well, and Utah State's going to bring Christensen back. Christensen back, I'm sure. Another steal by New Mexico State. Williamson poked it away to Rosen. She misses right under the basket. Williamson gets fouled, though, as she goes back with a stick-back try. And New Mexico State has given its best punch early here to the Wax first place team. 17 to 16, Utah State on top. We saw a close game between these two in early January. We might get another one here tonight in Las Cruces. My cataracts were so bad, I had to stop driving at night altogether. I missed out on so many activities with my grandchildren. Now after getting cataract surgery at Southwestern Eye Center, my eyes are like new again. It's so nice to be able to share these special moments with my family again. Wouldn't you like to see what you've been missing? Contact Southwestern Eye Center and let us show you. Call 575-521-1158 or SWEYE.com. Are you in the market for a vehicle? Head over to Danny Gamboa's Casa de Autos. Casa de Auto sells quality vehicles following three steps. They certify their vehicles through a 40-point inspection service. They own the bank, so financing is easy. After you purchase your vehicle from Casa de Autos, they'll continue to help you. Customers of Casa de Autos have been happy for the last 33 years. So come down to Casa de Autos, enjoy your experience, and find what you've been looking for. Casa de Autos is located in the big yellow building on Amador, five blocks south of Solano. Time for the New Mexico State Aggie baseball team to take the field and defend their WAC championship. New Mexico State baseball opening day is Saturday, February 9th. Grab your season tickets today for only $49. Call 646-1420 for your New Mexico State baseball season tickets. New Mexico State baseball, it's time. New Mexico State basketball on Aggie Vision is presented by Coca-Cola. Sunland Park Racetrack and Casino. And by Desert Sun Motors. Be sure to tune in to Tuesday night's broadcast of New Mexico State Softball as the Aggies welcome UNM back to the Aggie Softball Complex. First pitch is set for 5 o'clock and you can catch all the action live on Aggie Vision. Visit AggieVision.tv for channels in your area. Both sides have made some three-point shots here in the early going. Mark Track's team trying to take down the first place team in the WAG as New Mexico State trails Utah State 17 to 16 with 11-18 left in the first half. Denasia Williamson ties the game with her first free throw. Busting out of a slump the other night. Her season high 19 points and 10 assists. A very nice game for Williamson. As she gives New Mexico State the lead back at 18 to 17. And here over the last three weeks or so, Utah State has not played from behind a whole lot. 
Well, and I think one thing that Williamson's doing that I haven't seen all season is she's truly running this floor. She's dictating what's happening out there, and she just has that presence. And New Mexico State Aggies, that's really what they needed. They needed that leader, and tonight she's definitely filling that role. Camila Rose in there defensively for New Mexico State forced a bad pass. Crystal Turner couldn't get a handle on it. Already five turnovers by Utah State. Just one for New Mexico State, so NMSU is taking care of the basketball and again running its offense for really just the second game in a row where they found some consistency in it. They're definitely taking care, taking care of the ball is going to be a big factor tonight. But also, yes, they are moving away from the ball, getting somebody open. The Australian Stephanie Bear still in for the first time. Gives it to Turner, nice feed on the baseline. It goes out to Puale Furtado, who missed the first game between these two. She gets fouled going up with it. She'll have free throws. Kelsey Rosendahl, the first foul against New Mexico State. Well, and Furtado goes in down the baseline, and Rosendahl just tries to get there in time, but doesn't get completely in front of her, and she gets called for the foul. Furtado, a senior guard from Hawaii, scores right around two points a game. Stephanie Gilbert back in for New Mexico State. The Aggies leading score, fifth in the conference as Kelsey Rosendahl, one of the better rebounders in the league, goes out. All locked up at 18 apiece nearing the midway point of the first half here in Las Cruces. Utah State goes back up by a point. NMSU has not won back-to-back -back games since beating Utah, UTSA and Texas State back in the first week of January. Abby Scott gives the Aggies the lead back. Her second three-point shot of the night, and she is feeling the hot hand. She's been pretty good here of late. It started in the late portions of the game at Seattle last Saturday, made back-to-back three-pointers in the very end of the game, then had a season-best five three-balls Thursday night against San Jose State. The steal created again by New Mexico State. Gilbert will give it a try from up top, and the rebound comes down to Bearstow. Jasmine Rutledge, the rebound for NMSU. The Aggies can extend their lead. It's the largest they've led by a couple of points. Oh, nice feed, wide Rutledge open. wide open in there. And NMSU has scored five straight to go on top by four. Well, Williamson had two choices. She had Abby Scott up at the three, but Rutledge does a good job as a trailer. Nice shot. So the first place team in the WAC getting all at once from New Mexico State here in Las Cruces. Well defended down there in the post. Rutledge with the contest on the shot. Rosen grabbed the rebound. Now Rosen on the feed from Williamson. And Aggie sophomore Williamson goes in and out on that three-point try. But a good look there for NMSU. Well, and Rosen, I know she's not, she's more of a defensive player. She doesn't really like to shoot, but in that instance, she's got to take those shots and she's right underneath the basket. Utah State does not have a whole lot of teams dictate the tempo to it, but New Mexico State has done a really nice job here of controlling the flow of this game as NMSU is on a bit of a run here over the last couple of minutes. Denasia Williamson there picks up her first foul. Just three against New Mexico State in the ballgame. Well, Williamson may need a breather. She has that foul there, and earlier she got beat on the baseline. And track will take her out. Sasha Weber coming back in for her. Kelsey Rosendahl also checking back in for New Mexico State. Camila Rosen going out. Wholesale substitutions for both sides. Ba'ulu back out there. Schlott also in for Utah State. And that's Schlott with it going one-on-one -on -one with Weber. And the top shot there made by McKinley Williams. She's the one who made the game-winning three-pointer at the buzzer to beat New Mexico State back on January 17th. Well, and on that transition, transition Schlott wanted to go left. I think she's starting to get frustrated. She dipped her shoulder a little bit. So Aggie's doing a good job defensively on Schlott. It's been a while since NMSU has won back-to-back -back games there. Rutledge goes inside, draws the foul against Williams. Just a second against Utah State, so New Mexico State will throw it in. Well, here's Rutledge. She goes and attacks the basket but she gets caught from behind. Approaching the eight minute mark here in Las Cruces, the eighth place team in the WAC, New Mexico State on top of the conference leaders by a couple. 
over a double team. Gilbreth misses from about 15 out. Right, and I think this is where they may need Williamson back in. She's not going to be able to take too much of a breather because she was doing a great job. Jenna Johnson, her second three-pointer of the night, puts Utah State back up by a point. Well, it's been back and forth. Seen a handful of lead changes in this one. Nobody's led by more than five. Mm. Weber's stepped, no, they say Utah State stepped on the end line. Schlott had a hold of it. So after the timeout, New Mexico State will keep possession. It's been back and forth. Neither side has really been able to pull away. It's a one-point game here in Las Cruces. A special late season matchup between the UTEP Miners and the New Mexico State Aggies will take place in Las Cruces Saturday, February 23rd at 7 p.m. This men's basketball rivalry has been the hottest regional ticket for decades. Don't miss out on your chance to be a part of deciding the borderland supremacy. Aggies versus Miners, February 23rd. Tickets start at just $8, so get your tickets today by visiting the Pan Am Center ticket office or calling 575-646-1420. Sponsored by El Paso Electric and the Las Cruces Bulletin. when you're in a nine game losing streak, coaches will do things to try to break up the bad feelings. And at practice on Thursday before the game, Aggie senior Chrissy Fletcher buried a half court shot in the shoot around. And that was almost like the turning point for New Mexico State. They had a reason to celebrate, they had a reason to smile. And Chrissy Fletcher doesn't play a whole lot and certainly doesn't score a whole lot for New Mexico State coming off the bench, but she might have been the spark that capped a turnaround for New Mexico State. Roy Rosen was untouched on that inbound play. New Mexico State goes back on top by a point, and that's the kind of inbound play you want coming out of a timeout. That's exactly what you want to do. The first thing you want to worry about is getting that ball inbounds. Not only did they get it inbounds, they had a wide open player on the block. Jennifer Schlott, her second three-point shot of the night, and quickly Utah State regains the lead by a couple. Foul down in the post, it's called against McKinley Williams, already two against her. Coming off the bench, a freshman guard from Syracuse, Utah. So she'll stay on the floor with two fouls. Utah State goes back on top after that last possession by a couple with 7.05 left in the first half. Mexico State has had three really good high scoring halves in a row. Gilbert with all kinds of trouble getting that one up. There she creates the foul, and she'll get the end one try. Talk about some resiliency out of the 60 year senior transferring in from USC. Well, and endurance as well. She, was, she probably got hacked about two or three times, but Gilbert's a strong player down low. She continues to work hard, and Utah State gets called for the foul. And more importantly, McKinley Williams gets called for her third foul, sending Gilbert to the free throw line. She's the fifth best free throw shooter in the line. Three for three at the line tonight. She has five points, and New Mexico State goes back on top of this teeter-totter ball game by a point. Well, and for Utah State, Gilbreth was pretty cold throughout this whole time, but that kind of play is going to be something that could get her warm. That'll be a foul against Camila Rosen for New Mexico State, the first against her, the fourth against New Mexico State. She'll stay in the game. Pretty good defender. She had a great defensive game which triggered a good offensive game on hmm. Thursday night. Well, she actually tried to step over that screen, and she gets called for the foul. Christensen can pull from deep out there. She's also really good when she penetrates, misses the floater, gets her own rebound, and finishes the second try. 
Christensen with five points. One of six different players to score for Utah State. And the Blue Ags go back up by one. Well, and the good thing there is that Christensen had to work for that shot. Camila Rosen had her hands up. It wasn't an easy shot for Devin Christensen. Rosendahl gets around Vauala to get her own rebound and stick it back in. We have gone back and forth. Nobody wants to keep the lead in this one. New Mexico State back up by a point. This is great. This is just great back and forth. Good transition uh, games for both teams. Christensen misses and a fight for the rebound. This will be a foul against New Mexico State. Sasha Weber picks up her first. Nobody into foul trouble yet for New Mexico State. Utah State has McKinley Williams sitting on the bench with three fouls. A pretty good three-point shooter out of the contest as Sasha Weber the third leading scorer for New Mexico State has turned into a pretty good defender as well. That'll be a foul against Kelsey Rosendahl, the second against her. And that's just a tough break play. That's a hustle foul against New Mexico State. I think that's just an incidental foul. I mean, that she was going for the ball. You see here, she ha she's going for it, but uh, just can't get there before Vi Viallo. Jasmine Rutledge enters the picture from the right. Kelsey Rosendahl will go out. Rutledge, a very, very good defender. Kind of a lunch pail kid, just shows up and does her job. It's been a back and forth game. 13 lead changes already and still 5.45 left in the first half. Lots of contact as Schlott goes inside. She'll get free throws after the seventh New Mexico State foul. Well, and Schlott's a lefty, so she feels comfortable coming at this left-handed layup. So Rosen has to step right in front of her and make her go right. Rosen did not beat her to the spot, so it's the second foul against Rosen. Schlott led Utah State with 21 points the first time these two sides made. Eight points better than her average. On the NMSU scouting report, it said in big, black, bold letters, she killed us last time. She has eight points already tonight. And Utah State has made it the 14th lead change of the game. Weber fumbles that one across the end line. Just the second turnover by New Mexico State, though. The Aggies have been really good taking care of the basketball. A three-second violation as New Mexico State D's up pretty well. Sasha Weber guarding Devin Christensen one-on-one. -on -one. I think Weber might have poked Christensen in the eye. Comes over and talks to one of the officials about that last sequence. But NMSU will have a chance to go back on top. Been six weeks since NMSU has won back-to-back -back games. Stephanie Gilbert can't finish on that one. Utah State takes it back. Blue Aggies like to score and score a lot. Christensen misses on the baseline. Utah State has scored 80 or better in seven of its last 10 games. Certainly on pace for that here tonight, but New Mexico State keeping up with the wax leader. Well, the Aggies are doing great defensively against Christensen. She's getting a little frustrated, I think. She hasn't been able to make it easy. She hasn't had an open look, and when she has, it's been a tough shot. In and out on the three-point try by Williamson. Rutledge grabs the rebound and a foul against Utah State. That's two against Jenna Johnson. So it's picked up a little bit in the physical nature. Jasmine Rutledge there, a really nice kick out to Williamson after she got the catch inside. Well, I think it's been pretty, pretty uh, interesting as far as the physical play, but now I think the referees are gonna try and settle it down a little bit. And we'll see how that fares for both teams. Gilbreth shoots over the top of Nelson. Gilbreth hasn't quite warmed up from the field. She's made just one field goal here in the first half. Schlott, meanwhile, has made a couple of three-point shots. Big time fight for that rebound. And it will stay with Utah State. Well, and Gilbreth has the right idea. Instead of taking those three-point shots or 10-footers, uh, she's moving to the block and trying to get a quick, easy shot to get herself warm. Now an off-ball foul. They get this one on Franny Vaulu, the sophomore from Los Angeles for Utah State. First against her, 
seven against the Blue Ags. But because that was a foul with the offense in possession, no free throws here for New Mexico State, but NMSU down by a point on its home floor, hanging in there, going toe to toe with the first place team in the WAC. New Mexico State on Thursday broke out of a nine game losing streak, trying for back to back wins for the first time since the first week of January. Well, New Mexico State just has to keep their heads and not get caught up in Utah State's frustration and physical play. Just continue to keep doing what they're doing and play smart. Schlott penetrates, but is batted out of bounds by Jasmine Rutledge. New Mexico State is giving Utah State all it can handle. The Blue Aggies, first place in the conference, lead New Mexico State by a one-point margin here in Las Cruces. I inherited my father's 69 Norton Commando. It's been a dream of mine to restore it. <laughs> it's my dream for him to finish it. Frank has something great to save up for. This is my dad. Isn't that cool? And a very understanding girlfriend. I showed him a Wells Fargo savings account with my savings plan. And what it does is it takes a little bit of my money and puts it towards my goal. I want to get all the original parts and do it right for my dad. There's a couple months in between parts. <laughs> so, uh, one at a time. <laughs> Wells Fargo, with you when it's time to save. fool people. Nothing sells like the truth. From our fresh pack sauce to our fresh veggies to our 100% fresh dough, never frozen. At Papa John's, we believe fresh is better. Nobody does, but Papa John's does. Right now, Papa John's is giving you all large pizzas for just $11 each. Even specialty pizzas, only $11. Order now at PapaJohns.com. Everything's better when Papa's in the house. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. <laughs> Be sure to become a fan of Aggie Vision on Facebook. By doing so, you're sure to receive fun updates about New Mexico State Athletics right in your news feed. And you can also let us know where you're watching from by writing it on our wall. Visit Facebook.com slash Aggie Vision right now. Plenty to cheer about here for Mark Track's team in the Pan American Center as his team is hanging in there with the first place team in the WAC. The fourth half in a row, really, New Mexico State has played really well. Starting with the second half of the game at Seattle, three straight halves for the Aggies to score or shoot 40% or better. Hadn't happened since the first of the year. Well, and that's definitely what's been the difference for the New Mexico State Aggies in losing as many close games as they have. They've been in close games and their shooting has been horrendous at times. So if they can get that shooting on, with the, which they have been doing on Thursday night and tonight, they, they could go all the way through the tournament. New Mexico State trails it by three. About three and a half remaining before halftime. Travel. The freshman Sasha Weber commits just the third New Mexico State turnover. And so Utah State will have a chance to extend on its three point lead. Well, and the Aggies have been doing a really good job taking care of the ball. And if they can continue in that fashion for the rest of the half, they should come out okay at the end. Johnson short on that one, but the Blue Ags get the offensive rebound wide open for Schlott. She's made two three balls already, but that one is too short, and New Mexico State can get out and run. When Williamson does a great job blocking out Schlott, the shot goes up, and Williamson finds a body and gets the rebound. Christensen took that one away. It goes inside to Nelson. The reverse layup try. She gets fouled and will have free throws. Stephanie Gilbreth picking up her second foul. Well, and Gilbreth tries to go for the block there, but she gets a little bit of the forearm, just a little. So a couple of free throws coming here for Elise Nelson. Just a three point a night player. But you saw what she does well there. She attacks the basket really, really well. A guard who does not shoot the three all that often. Well, it, and the thing that I found interesting about Utah State is their bench may, each player may only score two to three points, but you times that times 10 or 11 players, you're talking 30 some points off the bench. Five point lead for Utah State. That equals its largest of the game. 
There's a foul as Denasia Williamson dribbles through a double team, and so New Mexico State will go to the other end and shoot some free throws. Johnson whistled for her third foul. That makes two players for Utah State with three fouls here with 3.01 left in the first half. So the first place team in the conference a little bit sloppy with it. And maybe the Aggies can put some of their better players on the bench. Kelsey Rosendahl back in for New Mexico State. She had a double-double on Thursday night as Sasha Weber goes out. Denasia Williamson was easily the best player on the floor Thursday night. 19 points and 10 rebounds in that one. And Williamson just does look like a totally different player from five weeks ago. I mean, her composure just on the line there, just completely different. A 22-year-old sophomore point guard for New Mexico State took a couple of seasons away from basketball before transferring to New Mexico State from the University of San Diego. She now has eight points, and it's back to a three-point Utah State lead. Christensen for three. Rattles in and out. Rebound will go back over to New Mexico State. Well, and I think that's smart by Utah State to try and get their star player warm, try to get her some open looks, give her some confidence for the evening. But Christensen uncharacteristically missing a lot of three-pointers. She's just one out of six from deep tonight. New Mexico State limited her the first time around up in Logan back on January 17th. Scott, the freshman, has made a couple tonight. Misses that one short. Christensen with the pull for the Blue Ags. And somebody needs to stop her. They just need to stop her as fast as they can. A lot of contact. That's a charge. Good job by Simone Rudin. Had she not gotten in front of Christensen, that would have been a coast-to-coast -coast play right here. Look at how set she is. She waits for it. And I'm sure it did not feel that great coming on the floor like that. Good job by Simone Rudin. Here's another look at it. Boom. The sophomore sacrificing the body there, forcing the eighth turnover by Utah State. Rutledge with the fadeaway shot puts it in. Four points for Rutledge, and it's back to a one-point game with under two minutes left in the first half. Some contact inside. Free throws coming here for Utah State after Denasia Williamson picks up foul number two. Looked like a pretty benign play there as Schlott tried to take it inside, but it'll still be the ninth foul against New Mexico State. So the final one and one of the first half here for Utah State. Schlott is the number 11 scorer in the WAC, coming in with 13 and a half a game. Made a couple of three-pointers tonight. She's now three out of three at the free throw line. She had 21 points in the first meeting between these two to lead all scorers in that game. Already with eight here tonight as Utah State goes back on top by three. New Mexico State takes time out as they were nearing a five-second count. 148 left in the first half. Utah State 37, New Mexico State 34. Melanie, what have you liked about New Mexico State here in the first half? Well, I've really liked their energy. They've been fast and quick. They've been playing fast and quick, but they've been running their offense. And they've had the open looks, which is what they had in the past, but they're making those shots now. But Williamson, I think, has been the key for me. She's been completely different than what she was a few weeks ago. She's got the composure. She's leading this team. She's dictating what's happening, making smart decisions. New Mexico State, the plan in entering this game was to attack Utah State. They're the worst defensive team in the conference in terms of points allowed. What have you thought of the attack by NMSU? Well, NMSU, again, just doing an outstanding job in, the, in that area. Under two minutes left in the first half. A three-point advantage for the visitors from Utah State, the first place team in the WAC. The homestanding Crimson Aggies trying for back-to-back -back wins for the first time since early January. Scott misses the rebound and the putback by Rosendahl. 
Can't finish that one either. Nelson with the rebound for Utah State. They can extend on their three-point lead. They've led by as many as five. Ba Ulu over Rosendahl, an ugly shot. And New Mexico State with just over a minute left in the half can try to perhaps tie with a three-point shot. Weber for the tie, misses, but the offensive rebound, oh, they'll, they will stay at, say it stays with New Mexico State. It was battled back and forth between a couple of players. Crystal Turner knocked it out for Utah State. Well, and that shot might have been a little rush for Weber. I mean, she did have the look. Um, but as a freshman, she'll learn to differentiate when she needs to take that shot and when she should just hold it up. The sophomore Nelson exits for Utah State. Under a minute to go. It's been a back and forth game. We've seen 14 ties here in the first half. Or 14 lead changes, rather. Weber will try to tie it up again. She doesn't miss on the second crack at it. We are locked up at 37 here in Las Cruces. Well, and she had the time and the space, and that's those are things she can do when she has those two things. Foul against New Mexico State, so Jennifer Schlott will go to the line after the 10th team foul against New Mexico State. So the double bonus coming up for the Blue Ags. Well, in Schlott, she's just a quick player, and she moves to attack the basket, and Weber just is at the wrong place at the wrong time. She's trying to get back on defense. It was the second foul against Sasha Weber. Utah State regains the lead. And I think Coach Track is having a discussion as far as, look, you know, she's trying to cut down the lane. How is that a foul on her if a player runs into her? 12 first-half points for Jennifer Schlott. Rosendahl gets behind the defense and ties it back up at 39. Well, and Simone Rudin does a great job getting the ball to Rosendahl. Rosendahl called for it. Minimal difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Utah State can essentially play for the final possession of the first half. I would imagine they'd want Christensen to take it. Down to four. Christensen from the top. And the first half is over, and New Mexico State goes into the locker room all tied up with the first place team in the whack. New Mexico State 39, Utah State 39. We'll talk with an NBA assistant coach coming up after the break. Yates Petroleum Corporation in Artesia, New Mexico is a proud sponsor of the New Mexico State Aggies. Yates Petroleum is always developing for New Mexico's greatest resource, its people. Supporting education, employment opportunities, community development, and wise resource management. Yates Petroleum is helping New Mexico be a strong, economical place to live. Oil and gas is serving all of us well. Yates Petroleum, producing and exploring for oil and gas since 1923. It's teamwork that makes winners every time. New Mexico State Aggies and Yates Petroleum. My cataracts were so bad, I had to stop driving at night altogether. I missed out on so many activities with my grandchildren. Now after getting cataract surgery at Southwestern Eye Center, my eyes are like new again. It's so nice to be able to share these special moments with my family again. Wouldn't you like to see what you've been missing? Contact Southwestern Eye Center and let us show you. Call 575-521-1158 or SWEYE.com. A university should not just be a place, it's a feeling. It's a feeling of pride. It's a feeling of belonging. It's a feeling of confidence that you are learning with the brightest minds for the best value. Forbes, U.S. News and World Report, Washington Monthly, and the Carnegie Foundation agree that New Mexico State University offers world-class education, yet embraces you with personal attention. We don't just offer excellence, we help you lay your path to it. 
Tied up at 39 apiece, New Mexico State and Utah State as the homestanding Crimson Aggies try to upset the number one team in the WAC. For many families, sports is a tie that binds, and for the track family, coaching basketball has become the family business. Mark Track is, of course, the head coach here at New Mexico State. We're joined courtside now by his brother, Maz Track, who is an assistant coach with the NBA's Oklahoma City Thunder. Coach, thanks for coming on with us, and uh, what would you think of that first half for your brother's squad? I, uh, I thought they came out ready to play, you know, playing a first-place team like Utah State. You know, you've got to play from timeout to timeout. Keep the game close, and they've done a good job from the 16 to the 12 to the 8 to the 4-minute timeout. You want to get it down to a 20-minute game, and they're in good shape right now, being tied at halftime, plus turnovers. When you want to pull off an upset, you've got to have a low turnover game, and they've got four turnovers in the first half, which is huge. It's been a while since New Mexico State has really sustained a lot of offensive consistency. They played really well Thursday night against San Jose State. What have you liked most about their offense here in the first half tonight? I've liked the movement, and I've liked that the girls have shown no hesitation to shoot the ball. Okay? You, you can't miss a shot if you don't take it. You know, we always talk about I'd rather have a, a shot at the basket than a turnover. So they've, they've accomplished that offensively, and they've found – the open girl when they've made their three-point shots, which is vital. You know, they've done a real good job, I thought, you know, playing with this team. Plus, losing by a point up at Utah State is also, they have confidence in that they can beat this team. Now, you're on a little bit of a break. You're an assistant coach with the Oklahoma City Thunder. It's All-Star Weekend. And we would be remiss to ask you what it's like to coach one of the best players in the game in Kevin Durant. What's it like? I mean, do you do a lot of coaching around him, or do you just kind of roll the ball out and let him play? What, 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 what people don't understand is with Kevin, he's probably the hardest worker that you can be around. I mean, he shoots the ball so much. He, he does a lot of workouts on his own with the coaching staff. He's, his number one priority is basketball. You know, he just doesn't. I mean, he could have a 40-point game, and the next morning he's in there at 8 o'clock ready to shoot. So it's, it's a good role model to have for other players that you've got to continue to work hard to be successful. As an assistant coach in the NBA, what is your role? I know a lot of times the head coach is the, you know, the one who gets a lot of the glory and a lot of the credit, but assistant coaches oftentimes make the team good or bad. What is, what is your role with the Oklahoma City Thunder? Well, we, we all have different responsibilities, but we also have the same responsibilities. We each have five teams to scout during the year. We have three players that we player develop those players during the season. And our, uh, our staff meetings, we all have different opinions on, on different aspects of the game. And it makes for, for a good blend because we come from all different directions and uh, you know it helps us as coaches. Now you and Mark grew up out in New Jersey. What is the best Mark Track story from your childhood <laughs> that you can share on the air? <laughs> uh, I, I, I wanted to, you know, this is when he was was older. It was a California story. Uh, he was playing for the right to go to the state championship game when he was a high school coach, and uh, he didn't know I was at the game. And they won the game, and I, like, run out to give him a hug, and the security guards think I'm some crazed fan going after him. <laughs> so uh, so he, he, it's a good thing he caught me out of the side of his eye, and he told the guy, hey, he's okay. To watch him over there on the sideline, he is a fiercely competitive person. Was he like that as a kid growing up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think intensity runs in our family. You know, uh, you know, I think the passion for the game, has always been with us, and I, I think that that is one of the reasons why he's been so successful. He's coached, he's coached the women's game like he would have coached the men's game. You know, the same intensity, and and it carries over on the girls. Who would win a one-on-one -on -one game if you played right now? Me. <laughs> <laughs> you think so? Yeah, I don't think there's any thinking involved. <laughs> <laughs> it is that kind of confidence that makes the Track family such a good coaching family. Maz Track, the brother of New Mexico State head coach Mark Track, joining us at halftime. Coach, enjoy the second half. Thank you, and go Aggies. Yes, sir. Our halftime score, New Mexico State 39, Utah State 39. We'll have a look at the first half numbers coming up next. continues Afternoon. Highway 45
Friday, March 8th in Legends Theater at Route 66 Casino Hotel. An unforgettable night of the Moody Blues iconic hits performed live. For tickets, visit rt66casino.com or the casino box office. The voyage continues. Highway 45, exclusive casino sponsor of Lobo Sports. Are you in the market for a vehicle? Head over to Danny Gamboa's Casa de Autos. Casa de Autos sells quality vehicles following three steps. They certify their vehicles through a 40-point inspection service. They own the bank, so financing is easy. After you purchase your vehicle from Casa de Autos, they'll continue to help you. Customers of Casa de Autos have been happy for the last 33 years. So come down to Casa de Autos, enjoy your experience, and find what you've been looking for. Casa de Autos is located in the big yellow building on Amador, five blocks south of Solano. Your New Mexico State men's basketball team is set to host I-10 rival UTEP at the Pan Am on Saturday, February 23rd at 7 p.m. This huge rivalry game is for regional supremacy. The game will be chock full of fun as the Panamaniacs will be out in full force. The Anno Juggler will perform at halftime. Aggies versus Miners Saturday, February 23rd at 7 p.m. Tickets start at just $8, so get your tickets today by visiting the Pan Am Center ticket office or calling 575-646-1420. Sponsored by El Paso Electric and the Las Cruces Bulletin. Man, I love these new cell phones. He just got a new phone and he can't stop using it. Boom! Profile pic. Do you guys need a moment? Since John is always on his phone, we thought he'd like using Wells Fargo mobile banking. Just pay the electric bill? Wow. He's able to pay his bills, check his balance. Wow. Even transfer money between accounts. I can tell you what's playing here if you like. Um, I can tell you too. See? Mm. Wells Fargo with you when life is mobile. Be sure to tune in to New Mexico State Sports Weekly next week when we recap the softball and baseball homestands with Kathy Rodoff and Rocky Ward. The show airs weekly on KRWG-TV, Altitude, and Fox Sports Arizona, or you can catch the full episode on YouTube. NMSU theater students began taking advantage of the new Center for the Arts this spring. The three-story state-of-the-art facility spans 59,000 square feet with space for theater and dance. Students are taking advantage of rehearsal rooms, classrooms, and the unique intimacy of an 18th century theater. None of the 466 seats are very far from the stage. The center encourages collaboration and provides the community with easier accessibility to many creative endeavors on campus. To learn more, go to artsci.nmsu. Dot edu. Abby Scott in the first half had eight points. A couple three balls for the freshman has helped New Mexico State tie up Utah State at the break. State Aggie baseball team to take the field and defend their WAC championship. New Mexico State baseball opening day is Saturday, February 9th. Grab your season tickets today for only $49. Call 646-1420 for your New Mexico State baseball season tickets. New Mexico State baseball, it's time. My cataracts were so bad, I had to stop driving at night altogether. I missed out on so many activities with my grandchildren. Now after getting cataract surgery at Southwestern Eye Center, my eyes are like new again. It's so nice to be able to share these special moments with my family again. Wouldn't you like to see what you've been missing? Contact Southwestern Eye Center and let us show you. Call 575-521-1158 or SWEYE.com.
New Mexico State basketball on Aggie Vision is brought to you by the Las Cruces Bulletin, Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo and you together will go far. Southwestern Eye Center, one pair of eyes, one place you can trust. And by Cisparo. New Mexico State University's music department is celebrating a Grammy Award. The La Contrina Quartet won a Latin Grammy Award for their work on the album Brasilario. The resident string quartet won the best classical recording and tours throughout Mexico and the United States. To learn more about the NMSU music programs, log on to music.nmsu.edu. We're all tied up at the break here in Las Cruces. 39-39, we're joined courtside by the former New Mexico standout, Melanie Veramontes. And Melanie, in the first half, 39 points is a lot more than NMSU usually, usually gives up in a first half, but it's been the defense that has kept them in this game. The defense has been so strong. It's been the defense that has created offense. They've forced Utah to State to make turnovers, and the Aggies have scored off of those turnovers. They've done a great job defensively. As we get a look at the first half highlights, Utah State in the very early portions of the game shot it really well from behind the three-point line. They had five in the first half, but they cooled down quite a bit later in the half. How did New Mexico State stop them? Well, they did a great job closing out the shooters. Schlott is, you know, she has, she's got some points, but she's just been trying to get something going, trying to create. J uh, Johnson has done well for Utah State, but then she just kind of disappeared there towards the end of the second, or the end of the half. So the Aggies doing a great job just making sure that the shooters are in front of them. Abby Scott had a couple of three-pointers in the first half for NMSU. The Aggies were four of 16 from deep, but this kind of turned into an inside game. Both teams were pretty aggressive going inside. How do you expect the second half to go? Well, I think the Aggies are going to continue to do what they've been doing. And, and what we said earlier in the game is that one difference is that Rosendahl is playing in this game down here in Las Cruces. She wasn't there in Logan, Utah. So th I think that's made a big difference. They've had more points in the paint. They've had points off turnovers. And the bench has also come in to score. Our halftime numbers pretty even all the way around. Both sides were perfect from the free throw line. Neither side all that warm from deep. And the rebound's pretty close. It looks pretty close, but one thing you can't see here is that Utah State's pretty frustrated. Christensen, their star player, not doing all that well. Schlott, she's got some points, but again, she's frustrated. She's just trying to create something. Our leading scorers from the first 20 minutes of play, Kelsey Rosendahl leading New Mexico State. Pretty good balance at the top end for New Mexico State. For Utah State, Schlott with 12 and then Johnson and Christensen adding in there. But Christensen, that's an important number. She had just five first half points. She's the second best scorer in the conference. So New Mexico State has done a really nice job of shutting her down. We'll take a look at our keys that we looked at from before the game. Melanie, how would you say New Mexico State did on these in the first half? Well, as far as the momentum, I mean, A plus, they've done an excellent job continuing as if it's just chapter two of their novel that they've started. So they've done a great job there. And they've also done a good job closing out Utah shooters. Christensen frustrated. And Johnson, like I said, just disappeared towards the end of that second half. Tied up as we open the second half. New Mexico State trying for back-to-back -back wins for the first time in six weeks. Empty on the first possession are the home Aggies. The Blue Ags will go down and they miss a bunny. They're right under the basket. Jenna Johnson, who shot it well early, missed that easy look there. And we have a foul on the rebound in that scrum. And they get that against Elise Nelson for Utah State. And nine times out of ten, you're going to lose this kind of battle to Kelsey Rosendahl. She's a tough player, and she hustles. You see there, she pretty much takes a, takes a hit there on the floor. New Mexico State, eighth in the WAC. Utah State, the first place team, but here on the home floor, NMSU not batting an eye. Rosen gets her own miss. Gilbreth will try the long range J and hits it. Her first three point shot of the night. She was one of nine in the first half, but hits the three ball there to get it going and New Mexico State goes up by three. Well, and if you're a Utah State fan, you definitely do not want Stephanie Gilbert to get hot because the New Mexico State Aggies are keeping toe to toe with the Blue Ags. And if Gilbreth comes on, that could be the last nail in the coffin. Airballed on the close in shot by Schlott. Rosen fumbles it out of bounds. Boy, she had a great look at it and just couldn't get a grip on that one. 
Again, Williamson doing a good job pushing the action there. It was a good decision. And those kinds of things are going to happen in basketball. Sometimes you're going to fumble the ball. Sometimes you're going to miss that easy shot. But Williamson does a good job directing traffic there. Utah State on an eight-game winning streak. They have not trailed much during this streak. Johnson, that one was tipped by Williamson, saved in bounds. McKinley Williams was not aware that it was tipped as she tried to save it in. She stepped out of bounds, and so it goes back over to New Mexico State. Well, McKinley Williams there, a freshman guard, made the game-winning buzzer beater the first time these two met up in Logan, but just two points in the first half for her, and now a foul off ball. And this will be against Utah State. Well, and it definitely hurt Utah State to have Williams on the bench so early in the first half. And then she just got another one here. That was the fourth foul on McKinley Williams, so she will exit. She gets her fourth foul a minute 51 into the second half. Devin Christensen, though, is the player who comes out. So Williams stays on the floor with four fouls. Goes with Gilbreth there. Gilbert misses, Utah State gets it back. Schlott got fouled, she'll have free throws. Denasia Williamson picks up her third. First foul of the half against New Mexico State. Well, and Williamson has to be careful here because the Aggies are gonna need her. We saw in the first half she was out for just a couple of minutes. And they need her out on the floor. She's going to have to be careful with her defense. Schlott led all scores with 12 in the first half. An 86% free throw shooter. It's a back to a two-point game. New Mexico State trying to pull the upset here on the home floor tonight and get a little momentum going. After tonight, just three games remaining before the conference tournament. Well, and the Aggies have the advantage here because they're not supposed to win. So they have that excitement of the anticipation of the win, whereas Utah State, they've got to be scared. They've got to be worried about this New Mexico State Aggie team beating them. Williamson got fouled. She'll have free throws. Jennifer Schlott, the first foul against her in this ballgame. Two against Utah State in the half. Williamson does a good job. She has a nice open look. Might have gotten an Oscar for that one. Pretty good <laughs> acting job there. Well, that's that's part of basketball, too. <laughs> you got to make it look good. Offensive charges come to mind. Three straight double-figure games heading into tonight for Williamson. Had a chance to get to 10 there. There's one of two at the line. She has nine points. Time for the game high with Kelsey Rosendahl. And now a foul on Camila Rosen. That's three against her. So one of the better defenders in the post for New Mexico State, inching closer to a little foul trouble. Well, and I know Rosen's just thinking, I gotta stop Christensen. I can't allow her to get to the basket. So she at least tries to slow her down a little bit, but she's called for the foul. And Mark Track will take her out in place of Jasmine Rutledge. Rutledge, a junior, pretty good defender coming in off the bench. The Aggies' best scorer coming out of the starting lineup. Rosendahl with the clear for NMSU. Weber gets behind the defense and extends the Aggie lead to five, the biggest advantage for New Mexico State in the game. Nice look, and you can tell on that particular play, Williamson was behind Weber, but they're starting to get that chemistry where they Williamson knows where Weber's going to go. Weber knows what kind of pass she's going to get. Christensen plays through some contact, misses badly. Gilbreth with the rebound for New Mexico State. She made her first three of the half. That one a little bit short. Christensen gives it up. That doesn't happen a whole lot. Williams misses. And New Mexico State has Utah State out of its game. Well, and that could indicate that Christensen's losing confidence in her ability to shoot tonight. So that, that's good for New Mexico State. Aggies by five, trying to pull the upset over the conference leader. And Gilbreth misses on the opportunity to extend the lead. Rutledge the offensive rebound, and Weber jars the three. Her second triple of the ball game. It's an eight point lead for New Mexico State over the first place team in the WAC. Well, and this is great. Stephanie Gilbert is having a rough night, but other people are stepping up and that's exactly what Coach Track has wanted for this whole season. Timeout taken by Utah State. New Mexico State has opened the second half on a nine to one run. It was tied at halftime, but New Mexico State is on top by eight.
A university should not just be a place, it's a feeling. It's a feeling of pride. It's a feeling of belonging. It's a feeling of confidence that you are learning with the brightest minds for the best value. Forbes, U.S. News and World Report, Washington Monthly, and the Carnegie Foundation agree that New Mexico State University offers world-class education, yet embraces you with personal attention. We don't just offer excellence, we help you lay your path to it. Sorry, lady. Dreaming of a new home? We can help. White Sands Federal Credit Union can get you a mortgage with low rates and easy terms to put you in your new home you've been dreaming of. See us today. We'll write you a check and make your dreams a reality, too. Are you in the market for a vehicle? Head over to Danny Gamboa's Casa de Autos. Casa de Auto sells quality vehicles following three steps. They certify their vehicles through a 40-point inspection service. They own the bank, so financing is easy. After you purchase your vehicle from Casa de Autos, they'll continue to help you. Customers of Casa de Autos have been happy for the last 33 years. So come down to Casa de Autos, enjoy your experience, and find what you've been looking for. Casa de Autos is located in the big yellow building on Amador, five blocks south of Solano. Sasha Weber has led a 9-1 to New Mexico State run to open the second half. A two-point shot inside, and then she cashed it in on a deep shot right before the timeout. How's she getting open so easily? Well, I think people are forgetting about her. She's not probably known for scoring a whole lot of points. They're probably keen on Gilbreth and Williamson doing a good job tonight. So I just think Sasha's being able to just fly underneath the radar in stealth mode. Five of her eight points coming here since the halftime break. 16-19 left in the game. New Mexico State with its largest lead at eight, trying to take down the first place team in the conference and win back-to-back -back games for the first time since early January. Ba'uala open inside. Her first bucket since the halftime break, narrows it back to a six-point deficit. It also broke a nine-to-one New Mexico State run. Gilbreth, you betcha. 11 for the senior, and it's a nine-point New Mexico State lead. Schlott tries to respond. Ba'ulu with the rebound out to Christensen, and she is ice cold tonight. The second leading scorer in the WAC has just five points in this game. Ooh, that was a little body check there. Rutledge goes around Christensen, and she has six points. Well, it is a double-digit New Mexico State lead over the conference's leader in Utah State. That was a good take by Jasmine Rutledge. She saw the mismatch there. She's got the height advantage, and she takes it to the hoop. That was a bad shot by Jennifer Schlott. Christensen fouls on the rebound, and New Mexico State has the first-place team in the WAC on its heels. 53 to 42, New Mexico State with the lead. 15.02 left in the game. Can the Aggies hold on? Stay in your seat and we'll find out. Springtime in the Mesilla Valley is back, and that means it's time for New Mexico State softball. Don't miss any of the action as New Mexico State opens their season on Friday, February 8th. Season tickets are on sale now for only $44. Call 646-1420 for your New Mexico State softball season tickets. New Mexico State softball, it's time. Yates Petroleum Corporation in Artesia, New Mexico is a proud sponsor of the New Mexico State Aggies. Yates Petroleum is always developing for New Mexico's greatest resource, its people. Supporting education, employment opportunities, community development, and wise resource management. Yates Petroleum is helping New Mexico be a strong, economical place to live. Oil and gas is serving all of us well. Yates Petroleum, producing and exploring for oil and gas since 1923. It's teamwork that makes winners every time. New Mexico State Aggies and Yates Petroleum. The Moody Blues. The voyage continues. Highway 45. Friday, March 8th in Legends Theater at Route 66 Casino Hotel. An unforgettable night of the Moody Blues iconic hits performed live. 
For tickets, visit rt66casino.com or the casino box office. The Voyage continues. Highway 45, exclusive casino sponsor of Lobo Sports. New Mexico State basketball on Aggie Vision is brought to you by Yates Petroleum, proud to support the New Mexico State Aggies. Casa de Autos, White Sands Federal Credit Union, and by Memorial Medical Center, care for your health. Be sure to come out and support your New Mexico State Aggies men's basketball team a week from tonight, Saturday, February 23rd, and help white out UTEP. Not only will the game be action-packed, but fans will also get to enjoy the Piano Juggler Halftime Act. Tip-off is set for 7 o'clock. For tickets, call 646-1420. The Aggie women, eighth place in the WAC, lead the first place team, Utah State, by 11 with just under 15 minutes left in the game. That's a long two, but Abby Scott rattles it in. She has 10 points. Her second consecutive double-digit game after scoring 17 on Thursday against San Jose State. And that's a jump ball. Chrissy Fletcher, her first time into the game, comes up with the stop. Chrissy Fletcher is not one that's going to back away from anyone. And she just takes on the lead, second leading score in the whack and says, uh-uh. Utah State keeps it on the arrow. And the Blue Ags just 10% shooting here in the second half. And there's a foul on Rutledge from behind on Christensen. Well, and I'm surprised Utah State's not getting called on that little forearm that they like to use to try to create space, and that's probably the fourth or fifth time I've seen that happen, but Weber gets called for the foul. The first time these two met up in early January, New Mexico State led by 11 in the first half. Utah State then went on a 14-0 run. They'll need something similar here to try to keep their eight-game winning streak from coming to an end. Va'ulu on the easy look inside, but New Mexico State like the steel curtain defensively. Well, Fletcher does a good job making, giving, contesting that shot, and at least it wasn't an open look. She, Valu had to work for that. That one's taken away by Johnson. Rutledge will try to cut her off defensively. Oh. And that is an air ball <laughs> on a layup. Utah State is just absolutely off its mark here in the second half. They're one of 11 from the field since the halftime break. Rutledge batted that out of bounds. It will stay with Utah State. What's New Mexico State doing differently here in the second half that's allowed them to go on this big run? Well, I think they're, they've been hitting those shots off a of transition, but also they've been running their motion offense and they've been getting some good looks defensively doing really well. Utah State is the best scoring team in the conference. They average better than 76 a game, but they have scored just three points since halftime. Johnson needed that shot. She had not scored since early in the first half. She missed an air ball in the last possession, but there knocks that one in. She has 10 points. Well, and the Aggies have a have a good lead here so they can take their time, run their offense. Williamson makes a good decision there to just take it easy. A massive screen by Rosendahl and Abby Scott, her third <laughs> triple of the night. She had five three-pointers on Thursday night, eight in the last two games combined. Well, and I think Utah State needs to get back to Jenna Johnson. She was really hot in the beginning of the first half, and she hasn't done much since then. Va'ulu, a nice feed there from Christensen. Back to a 12-point game, but that 14-point margin that the Aggies held before that possession was the largest of the game for New Mexico State. And shooting here in the second half has been the difference. Well, that almost got the members bounced, but Rosendahl will get free throws after she fights in there for the offensive board. Rosendahl does a great job getting position as she pulls down that board. Va'ulu called for the foul, the second against her. Five and a half against Utah State. Rosendahl, a 75% free throw shooter, goes to the line for New Mexico State. Well, and all Va'ulu had to do was just go straight up. She's got the height advantage on Rosendahl, but she just takes the bait. Rosendahl had a double-double, 11 points, 10 rebounds Thursday night against San Jose State in the 20-point win. Her fifth double-double of the season. And it was her first double-figure scoring game in three weeks. 
Well, and Rosendahl is beginning to look a lot more like herself at the beginning of the season. She's been suffering from an injury for the last six weeks, and it's only been on Thursday that she's starting to feel a little more comfortable out there on the floor. Nice. Camila Rosen forces the steal for New Mexico State. That's the fourth of the game for NMSU, and Gilbreth will try to add to the lead, but Utah State will get the board. Oh. Christensen got away with a carry there. The official just flat missed that one. Seven points for Devin Christensen, the second leading scorer. Averages 20 a game, but well, she's been ice cold tonight. Well, and the Aggies don't need to get caught up in Utah State's harriedness here. They just need to take their time, keep their heads, continue to make the smart play, the smart decisions. Utah State has decided to get aggressive with it. Schlott goes inside, gets fouled, and we'll have free throws after we get a timeout. New Mexico State, it was a tie game at halftime, but the Aggies lead it by 11 on the home floor over the first place team in the WAC. 11.35 left, and we get a timeout. A special late season matchup between the UTEP Miners and the New Mexico State Aggies will take place in Las Cruces Saturday, February 23rd at 7 p.m. This men's basketball rivalry has been the hottest regional ticket for decades. Don't miss out on your chance to be a part of deciding the borderland supremacy. Aggies versus Miners, February 23rd. Tickets start at just $8, so get your tickets today by visiting the Pan Am Center ticket office or calling 575-646-1420. Sponsored by El Paso Electric and the Las Cruces Bulletin. Fargo team members have their own definition of banker's hours. In a time when budgets are being cut for our schools, parks, and other important programs, we believe commitment to our communities is more vital than ever. And that's why every day, our people give thousands of hours to the communities we serve. 1.3 million just last year. Wells Fargo, with you when your community needs a hand. To find out how we can help in your community, visit wellsfargo.com. The New Mexico State softball team will wrap up the Troy Cox Classic tomorrow with a pair of games on the schedule, starting things off at 11.30 against Colorado State. For ticket information, visit nmstatesports.com or head out to the softball complex. This was a tie game at 39 apiece at halftime. Kelsey Rosendahl has had a pretty good second half, and she's helped lead the Aggies to a 20-9 spurt here in the first eight and a half minutes to give the Aggies the lead. Schlott at the free throw line for Utah State, leading all scores. Now with 14 points and make it 15. But the first place team in the conference, Utah State, has a little work to do here against New Mexico State, sitting at eighth in the whack. Well, and they, they definitely have more to lose. This is not going to be good for them as they head into the second half of the conference knowing that they're vulnerable, knowing that it's viable, that they can be beaten. Other teams are going to be gunning if they lose to New Mexico State tonight. That is the third three-pointer of the night for the freshman, Sasha Weber, 11 in the game. And the Aggies of New Mexico State back up by 12. And their defense gets it done again. Rosen took that one away for NMSU. 11 minutes left. NMSU by 12 and make it 14. That ties the largest lead of the night. The second bucket of the game for Camila Rosen. Well, and Williamson has great court sense there. She was about to pull it up, but she sees Rosen coming around the back end there. Nice job on the patience. Travel. Uh, they'll call that a foul. Might have been a bailout call. It goes against Kelsey Rosendahl, the third against the Aggies senior. And Devin Christensen has just been beside herself in frustration tonight. Well, and I thought this was a travel, as you may have accidentally heard me say, but the Aggies kind of bail her out there. Don't think it was a good call. Rosen pokes that one out of bounds. Christensen has just struggled to find her groove tonight. The Wax third or second leading scorer is just three of 13 from the field and one of eight from deep. Not gonna be bashful about trying it though. And 
Just as we talk about her slump, she hits a big one. <laughs> well, that's the thing about shooters is they always think they're going to make it. Doesn't matter if they're one for 90. We approach the midway point of the second half. New Mexico State looking for back-to-back -back wins for the first time in six weeks. Leads the first place team in the conference by 11. I'd like to see Gilbert maybe post up to try and get some confidence down low. She wants to make some buckets before she starts taking some of those threes. Gilbert, a much needed field goal. 13 points for her. She struggled though offensively. She's now four out of 19 from the field and that's an offensive foul against Elise Nelson. Well, and there's the forearm I was talking about earlier. They've been doing that all night. And Nelson finally gets the call. That, that one was probably a little more obvious than all the other ones. But here's another look at it. You see her forearm go straight up to Sasha Weber's chin. And she gets, she's going to get called for that every time. Utah State has won five in a row in this series. It's been two years since the Aggies have beaten Utah State. That came here in Las Cruces two seasons ago. They lead it by 13, does New Mexico State. Trying to get a little momentum. Mark Track, the head coach of New Mexico State, leading the turnaround here in Las Cruces. Six and 24 last season. His Aggies got their 10th win of the season on Thursday night against San Jose State. Eight to shoot for New Mexico State. Williamson goes over slot. The floater kisses in. 11 for Denasia Williamson, the largest lead for NMSU at 15 points. Well, and that's the second time Williamson has had to take it because she's had no other choice, and she capitalizes on that opportunity. Utah State is forcing shots up, and that is a perfect transition look for New Mexico State. 70 to 53, the eighth place team leads the first place team here in Las Cruces. The U tags are not it. They are getting turned around on defense. They don't know what to do. Stays with New Mexico State as it went off the leg of Christensen, who comes up limping a little bit. A grimace as she hobbles her way down the floor. Could you imagine this coming into tonight? New Mexico State had lost nine of its last 10, playing the first place team in the WAC here in Las Cruces, but a 17 point advantage with 8.40 left in the game. Williamson, a little bit too strong. And the Aggies have never really been in this kind of situation, so it's going to be interesting how they handle being up instead of being down. Christensen wanted the foul, but she dribbled into the contact there. Rosendahl was statuesque down there on the block. Rosendahl does a good job just going straight up. New Mexico State, an 11-3 run, trying to add to it, and they do. Stephanie Gilbert, her first three-point shot of the night. 20 points. They have the number one team down by 20 points. That is just amazing. And there's an answer back, though. The three ball by Crystal Turner. Just her ninth three-point shot of conference play. But it's still a 17-point New Mexico State lead. Weber in a little trouble over there. Mark Track takes time out very, very wisely. The Pan American Center crowd wanted a foul there. There was a lot of arm contact on that over there. It's getting choppy. It's going to probably get more choppy out there. I wouldn't doubt if the officials start calling it a little tighter. Utah State, that's their best option at this point is to make it a physical game. We'll get a second look at that play over there by Weber. Yeah, they're just going to have to get in Aggie's face, try New Mexico State's faces, trying to rattle them, try to get them to make an ill-advised decision. But there they just hammer Weber. New Mexico State has five freshmen and overall seven newcomers on the team into the program for second-year head coach Mark Track. But they're starting to gel at the right time. We're down to the final five regular season games, four conference games left, including this one. And New Mexico State, after a nine-game losing streak, on the verge of winning back-to-back -back games for the first time since early January, as Mark Track's team starting to gel here late in the regular season. A 17-point lead, that one Stays with New Mexico State very fortunately with nine on the shot clock. An open look for the freshman Weber. 
Rosendahl, another offensive rebound and puts it back in. <laughs> The Aggies doing a great job moving the ball around. They know they're going to get hammered, so they're trying to get rid of it before they do, and it's leaving them open underneath. Turner made it three on the last possession. Can't make it this time. Va'aulu with the offensive board, and Christensen hits her third three of the night. She has 13 points, eight of it here in the second half, but she has had to earn every single one of those points as New Mexico State Holds on to a 16-point lead. We're down to 6.45 left. Gilbreth, yes, the answer back. She struggled to start, but she's up to 19 points for NMSU. Christensen will try to force that one. She tried to create some contact on Rutledge, didn't get the call. And New Mexico State can add to its 19-point lead. Great ball movement again. Williamson, yes, sir. <laughs> New Mexico State scored 90 at season high on Thursday night. They have 81 here with six minutes left. But Turner answers right back. And wow. New Mexico State doesn't want to get away from what they've been doing this entire game. They need to keep the intensity despite their big lead here. The first place team in the WAC in danger of losing here in Las Cruces. New Mexico State trying for back-to-back -back wins for the first time since the first week in January. Williamson gives that one up on the turnover. Christensen. Nice. Wow, Jasmine Rutledge just took her off her spot. Gilbreth open. 21 for Stephanie Gilbreth. A 21-point lead for New Mexico State. The house is on fire. Oh, Schlott, though with the response. But this might be a case of too little too late for the first place team in the WAC. 5.09 left in the ball game. Well, and the Aggies can control it here. They can take their time, show their composure. That one's kicked. Jenna Johnson puts her foot on it. We have a timeout on the floor and we have an upset in the brewing, New Mexico State. Leads it 83 to 65 over the first place team in the conference. Everything going New Mexico State's way here in Las Cruces. Nothing sells like the truth. From our fresh pack sauce, to our fresh veggies, to our 100% fresh dough, never frozen. At Papa John's, we believe fresh is better. Nobody does, but Papa John's does. Right now, Papa John's is giving you all large pizzas for just $11 each. Even specialty pizzas, only $11. Order now at PapaJohns.com. Everything's better when Papa's in the house. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. <laughs> Springtime in the Mesilla Valley is back, and that means it's time for New Mexico State softball. Don't miss any of the action as New Mexico State opens their season on Friday, February 8th. Season tickets are on sale now for only $44. Call 646-1420 for your New Mexico State softball season tickets. New Mexico State softball, it's time. New Mexico State has had its two best offensive games this week, and it's a big reason, three-point shooting. 15 of them on Thursday night against San Jose State. They've already made 12 here tonight. Well, and the Aggies have done great in transition. They've got 22 assists, but they've been making the smart passes in transition, and they've been getting smart shots. Five players into double figures for New Mexico State. 12 out of 31 behind the three-point line. Stephanie Gilbreth was ice cold in the first half, but has made four three-pointers here in the second half. As the Aggies are getting into blowout territory here over the first-place <laughs> team in the WAC. It's an 18-point lead with just under five minutes left. 
That's a five second call on Denasia Williamson. She was closely guarded out there by Puale Furtado. Well, and, and her teammates have got to know she's in trouble and they've just got to sprint toward her and try to get that ball in their hands. That's just the eighth turnover by New Mexico State in the game. Furtado throws that one to nobody in particular. 12 turnovers by Utah State. We're getting down to the point of the game where, as you've mentioned a couple of times, New Mexico State can now run its offense for the full 30 seconds of the shot clock unless there's an easy look come open sooner. Scott standing on the line. Rebound to Turner and Utah State. Furtado from way downtown, you betcha. And a timeout taken quickly by Jerry Finkbeiner and Utah State. It's the first field goal of the game for Puale Furtado, the senior. She averages just a point and a half a game. There she hits the three ball and makes it 83 to 68, a 15 point New Mexico State lead. Well, Utah State, are they're, they're in desperation mode, quite frankly, and so they're gonna take those kinds of shots. Furtado has a nice one there. And they're just gonna try and make something happen. Utah State had won eight in a row entering this one tonight, tying the school record for the longest win streak ever, dating all the way back to 1976. But Jerry Finkbeiner in his first season in Logan, watching his team go down by 15 points on the road tonight. Mark Track got a signature win earlier this season on the home floor over UTEP, trying for his first signature win against a conference opponent in the WAC. Nice ball movement, out it goes to Scott. That's four three-pointers for the freshman. Nine over the last couple of games, and it's back out to an 86 to 68 lead. Well, Utah State's gonna try and press and try and make Mexico State make some bad decisions, but so far they haven't made too many. Just need to take care of the ball, keep control of the tempo. And Utah State fouls Denasia Williamson. It looked like a foul that you get in the final minute of the game, but it comes with 3.48 left, and it takes us to our final timeout. New Mexico State leads the first place team in the WAC, 86 to 68, trying to pull the upset here at home. My cataracts were so bad, I had to stop driving at night altogether. I missed out on so many activities with my grandchildren. Now after getting cataract surgery at Southwestern Eye Center, my eyes are like new again. It's so nice to be able to share these special moments with my family again. Wouldn't you like to see what you've been missing? Contact Southwestern Eye Center and let us show you. Call 575-521-1158 or SWEYE.com. Yates Petroleum Corporation in Artesia, New Mexico is a proud sponsor of the New Mexico State Aggies. Yates Petroleum is always developing for New Mexico's greatest resource, its people. Supporting education, employment opportunities, community development, and wise resource management. Yates Petroleum is helping New Mexico be a strong, economical place to live. Oil and gas is serving all of us well. Yates Petroleum, producing and exploring for oil and gas since 1923. It's teamwork that makes winners every time. New Mexico State Aggies and Yates Petroleum. Hi, my name is Barbara. Hey there, I'm Michelle. Hi, I'm Pookie. Hello, I'm Ralston. New Mexico State University is our home. Discover with us. Explore with us. Our students are research partners. Learn with us. Excel with us. We give students the tools to succeed. Ask us. We work in communities all over the state. Join us. Join us. Join us. NMSU provides so many ways to serve. New Mexico State University, unleashing potential. Aggie fans, do you think Bon Jassi is one of the best dunkers in the country? Well, if you do, then let your voice be heard and help C make a run to the Final Four in Atlanta to participate in the Denny's Slam Dunk Contest. C is one of 16 seniors nominated as a State Farm Dark Horse dunker, and all he needs to win is your vote. So head to Facebook.com slash College Slam and cast your vote today. Voting for Round 1 ends Monday, February 25th. So tell your friends and family and help Bonja move on. Utah State fouled Denasia Williamson before the timeout. Williamson at the free throw line makes the first of a one and one. Williamson with 15 points tonight. Her fourth consecutive double figure game after six straight games where she was under 10 points. The second leading score for New Mexico State. 16 points tonight. 
A 20-point New Mexico State lead with 3.43 left. The first place team, Utah State, on its heels, but Va'ulu there now gets into double figures. He has 10 points. 18-point advantage, and I thought we might see this before the timeout. Utah State is going to go ahead and start fouling New Mexico State with 3.32 left in the game, and they're going to try to force New Mexico State to make free throws to win this game. Well, and free throws has been uh, not one of New Mexico State's strongest suits, but they've been doing well these last few games. Uh, so Utah State may just be trying anything. They're just in desperation mode, trying to get anything going, trying to make up 18 points in three minutes. The foul is on for Tato. That's just one against her. And Utah, New Mexico State's backing everybody off the free throw line as Williamson now has made three in a row at the free throw line. This has been a point of emphasis in practice over the last couple of weeks for New Mexico State because Mark Track knows that free throws is a deficiency at times for his team, but not this time. Denasia Williamson is five of six at the line. NMSU by 20, 90 to 70. 90 is their season high, which they scored on Thursday night against San Jose State. And if Utah State's going to send NMSU to the free throw line, they might hit 100 as Franny Va'ulu goes inside for another layup. Eight of her 12 have come here in the second half and another foul as Williamson will head back to the free throw line. Well, and quite frankly, it's easier to make a free throw when you're up by 20 versus when you're down by five and you absolutely need it. New Mexico State just a notch under 70% from the line this season. But they are 11 out of 13 at the strike tonight. And... It'd be pretty safe to bet that New Mexico State is going to get a lot more than that tonight. That 70% number. Well, I think it shows a lot of respect for New Mexico State that the Utah Aggies would start fouling so early. Not a lot of faith in their offense tonight. Ninety two seventy two New Mexico State by 20. Furtado, nice little floater there. Back under 20 points at 18 and another foul by Utah State. This time Gilbert will go to the free throw line and that is not who Utah State wants at the line. She is an 82% free throw shooter, fifth best in the conference. Well, and I was wondering when the Aggies were going to do that, when they were just going to switch the inbounder and allow Gilbert to take this home. So that's 10 now on Utah State. So two free throws the rest of the night for New Mexico State. And you might want to get a pillow, get maybe a bowl of popcorn and settle in because if this is going to continue, this is going to take a while to play this last 307. It just allows Aggie fans to revel in the glory. 23 points for Stephanie Gilbert. New Mexico State has not missed a free throw since Utah State has employed this tactic. Christensen hits the three, and that's the plan in play for Utah State. They're going to try to trade three for two. Utah State wanted a charge on Denasia Williamson. It's a blocking foul instead, and so Williamson will go back to the free throw line. 94 to 77. A 17-point New Mexico State lead. Well, and Williamson's trying to beat Furtado there, but because of Utah State's strategy, it's almost just better just to stand there and take the hit and get the free throws. Have you ever in your life seen a team start fouling with four minutes left like this? I can't say that I have. <laughs> 21 points now for Denasia Williamson. That one rolls in and out, a 95-77 lead. 2.45 left as New Mexico State tries to upset the first place team in the whack. Are they going to call that? Yes, they're going to count that basket. After the foul against Simone Rudin, McKinley Williams with the basket, basket and one. Well, Rudin just doesn't get in front of her and she hooks up the saddle. But, you know, if you're a Utah State player, I, I wonder how they would feel about this kind of strategy. For me, I would just wonder, why don't we get some of the younger players in and just try to get them some experience, run the offense, 
get them ready for conference play, tournament play. Williams made the three-pointer at the buzzer in the first meeting between these two, but unless Utah State comes up with a miracle here, there won't be a buzzer beater in this one. It's a 15-point New Mexico State lead with 2.40 left in the game, and Utah State is now going to back off of its fouling ploy as NMSU made eight free throws in a row. Aggies will settle into their offense and a try for the steal. And instead, that's a foul on Jenna Johnson, her fourth. And now Denasia Williamson's going to get a technical foul. That's just a loss of composure there by New Mexico State's point guard as Jenna Johnson is going to get a couple of free throws earned for her. And you see the sophomore Williamson just lose poise here. Well, and, and this is just a young player's mistake. She loses composure there. I mean, Johnson was all over her, but at the same time, you got to just keep it together. That's the fourth foul on Williamson, the technical. And that's exactly what Utah, Utah State wants. They want, they're trying to get into your brain, make some mental mistakes, and there's your first crack. It was the fourth foul against Johnson. So both players pick up their fourth foul in that exchange. Mark Track. Not really in after the officials. He was pretty upset with Williamson. You didn't see it on camera, but he was giving Williamson an earful. He threw his hands up and said, why? We'll shoot the technical free throws first as Track gets an explanation from the officials. Well, Aggie fans are not happy right now. A lot, lot of boos and hisses. Devin Christensen, a 91% free throw shooter, the best free throw shooter in the conference, will get the technical free throws. She's eighth in the nation in that department. She has 18 points now tonight, 13 of it coming here in the second half. That makes it a 13-point game. Now, Denasia Williamson trying to gather herself, has a smile on her face as she comes back down, and she'll shoot her free throws after the foul against Jenna Johnson. A double bonus here for Williamson. And if she makes both of these, it will equal her career high. Well, and New Mexico State has to be careful here. They have the lead now, but there's still plenty of time. If they're going to continue to make those kinds of mistakes, it's very possible they could lose this. 14-point lead for New Mexico State as the Aggies looking for back-to-back -back wins for the first time in early, since early January. Trying to snap an eight-game winning streak for Utah State and handing the first place team in the conference just its third loss in whack play. Denasia Williamson has tied her career high with 23 points. Christensen cans that three ball. She has 21, but it's still a 97-85 New Mexico State lead, a 12-point advantage with 2.17 left. And again, Utah State will go back into foul mode. If Gilbreth makes both of these free throws, she will also equal her career high, which she set in the first meeting with Utah State. She had 25 in that game. Well, one thing that all this fouling did do for Utah State is it slowed New Mexico State's momentum almost to a standstill. Both of them in, Gilbert tying a career high. So two New Mexico State Aggies have equaled their career highs tonight. 99 to 85, a 14 point lead. Christensen from way deep and that one grazes the front iron. And Kelsey Rosendahl will go to the free throw line. 99 to 85 for a team like New Mexico State that averages 58 and a half points per game to be approaching 100 points is unbelievable. Well, and that's something we've been touting this whole season is that New Mexico State's been playing defense. They've been doing well. And if they're shooting, would just come on. That is the first time in 21 years that New Mexico State has put up 100 in a game. 101 to 85. The last time the Aggies scored 100 was February 29th of 1992 when they beat UC Santa Barbara 103 to 94. Here they lead the first place team in the WAC 101 to 85 with under two minutes to go. It's the second time this season Utah State has given up 100 in a game. 
They lost at San Jose State 100-83 earlier in the conference season. When Utah State calls off the pressure, Furtado picks her up at half court now. Oh. That one's blocked. Gilbreth gets it back and then gets leveled by Va'ulu. Gilbreth a little shaken up. You talk about a player who's got a lot of guts and resilience, it is Stephanie Gilbreth. You see those knee braces on both knees, that's because she's had four ACL surgeries. Three on her right knee, one on her left. Ankle injuries, a broken foot at times in her career. She's back up and at it though, and she'll go to the free throw line trying to set a new career high. She's already scored 25 points, which tied her previous career best. And there it is, Stephanie Gilbert with a career high 26 points. Comcast is the exclusive provider of all of Aggie Vision's live telecasts. Aggie Vision produces more than 40 games each season, and Comcast is the only partner to bring you every one of those events. For the most coverage of New Mexico State Athletics, watch Aggie Vision this season on Comcast. 27 points for Stephanie Gilbreth, 103 to 85 in the Pan American Center crowd loves it. So does Mark Track, as the Aggies are going to upset Utah State, the first place team in the WAC, in an offensive explosion. Denasia Williamson tying a career high with 23 points. Standing next to Stephanie Gilbert there, setting a new career high with 27. This was a tie game at halftime. Ulu gets it back to 103 to 87. A 16 point New Mexico State lead. And Alexis Nelson making just her third appearance of conference play will go to the free throw line. So many players scoring tonight, Jay, and that's a lot of bench points that the New Mexico State has been looking for throughout this whole season, and they get it done tonight. New Mexico State has scored 65 points, make it 66 points here in the second half. 105 to 87 with a minute 12 to go. Wow. Aliyah Magazzini in there will send Va'u to the free throw line. Mark Track using this as an opportunity to clear his bench. The senior Magazzini scored just a couple of points in conference play for Coach Mark Track, who in the last two games the Aggies have now scored 195 points. There were times earlier in the conference season where you'd have to go four games to get 195 points. They, they definitely were waiting for this component of their game to come into play, and it looks like it's happening at the right time. Well, they exploded for 90 on Thursday against San Jose State, and confidence is contagious as the Aggies have extended that here into this game. About to take down the first place team in the WAC in a very big way. Magazzini. Gets it taken away by Christensen, but the Las Cruces native Elena Holguin gets dragged down on the rebound try. Christensen comes away with it with 47 seconds to go. And Magazzini gives a little bump <laughs> to Devin Christensen. Magazzini is going to get her money's worth here. That's two fouls. Yeah, she figures if we're going to play street ball, let's play it. Devin Christensen is rarely this frustrated. She scored 21 tonight, but she has been abused by New Mexico State's defense. Well, and she's only made those points during a time for her team when they didn't really matter, didn't really count anymore. Too little, too late. 105 to 90 with 46 seconds to go. Now, if you told Mark Track before tonight started that his team would give up 90, he'd probably be pretty upset. <laughs> but you never in a million years would have imagined the team that has struggled like this would score 105 points. Timeout taken by Utah State. The Aggies lead it 105 to 91. This is the most New Mexico State's women's team has scored since 1982. 31 years since the Aggies have put 105 points on the board. And Melanie, where has this team been all season? <laughs> well, I think this is the team that we've always known they could be. We saw, we see the potential and in games past, we saw glimmers of brilliance and they finally put the whole 40 minutes together. 
A 14-point lead over the number one team in the WAC as Jerry Finkbeiner can only look on as his team has been just throttled here by New Mexico State in Las Cruces. 46 seconds left in this one. It's all academic at this point. That'll be a foul against Stephanie Beristow, her first. And Utah State's not going to give up on this fouling. They've done this since the four-minute mark in this game. And New Mexico State has been very good at the free throw line. The Aggies are 28 out of 31 at the free throw line tonight. Tanasia Williamson, 14 out of 16. And Elena Holguin, the Las Cruces native, a graduate of Mayfield High School right here in southern New Mexico, goes to the line. Be sure to join us Saturday, February 23rd, when the Aggies host I-10 rival UTEP. Tip-off is set for 7 o'clock and can be seen live on Comcast, Altitude 2, and Comcast Sportsnet Houston. For channels in your area, visit AggieVision.tv. Elena Holguin makes one out of two free throws. The Aggie redshirt freshman as New Mexico State gets the steal. Well, now is a good play by Holguin. She sees the, the passing lane. She gets right in front of it, and she's able to tap it out. Oh, Alexis Nelson can't grab it. Saved in by Shea Young, but she stepped on the sideline. So 24.9 left in this one, and Utah State will get handed its second worst loss of the season. They'll fall to 11 and three in the whack. Which depending on what happens tonight with Seattle, may bump them down into second place. Tanya Steed with the rebound. This is just the third game of the season. She's suited up for Utah State, gets the rebound, kicks it out, the three-pointer made by McKinley Williams. Will tighten the score up. But for the first time in six weeks, New Mexico State wins back-to-back -back games and they do it in dominating fashion. The final score, New Mexico State 106. Utah State, the first place team in the WAC, 94. Back-to-back -back win for the Aggies since January 3rd and January 5th when they beat Texas State and UTSA in back-to-back -back nights. A career-high 27 points for Stephanie Gilbreth. Tanisha Williamson equals a career-high with 23. In all, five Aggies score in double figures. 16 points for Abby Scott. 14 for Kelsey Rosendahl, the freshman Sasha Weber with 11. Six points each for Camila Rosen and Jasmine Rutledge. Alexis Nelson got in on the act, the freshman with a couple of points and one for the Las Cruces native Elena Holguin. New Mexico State 11 and 14 overall, now five and 10 in Western Athletic Conference play as the victorious head coach of the Aggies, Mark Track, joins us now. And Coach, an amazing homestand for your squad. 90 points a season high on Thursday night, and you score 106 tonight. It's the highest scoring game for New Mexico State since 1982. How did you guys do it? I don't know. We've gone from the uh, from the 97 Knicks to the running Rebels of 92 <laughs> overnight. I don't know what the heck happened. Uh, you know, I always felt we could put up points. You know, I guess we're... We concentrated our effort on the defensive end all those weeks, and now we're concentrating our effort on the offensive end. But it's the first place team. We got two big wins at home, uh, average 95 points. Uh, it's amazing. I, I think we're, we're getting confidence offensively. Kids are shooting the ball. Kids are shooting the ball the way we think they can shoot the ball. And you know what's happened is our young kids, uh, you know, uh, Abby, Scott, and uh, uh, Danasia, and uh, uh, Sasha. Uh, Sasha, man, they, they play great. You know, but they did a nice job. They did a nice job. You know, they did a great job. I thought in both games against San Jose State when you scored 90, tonight against Utah State 106, the defense created the offense yeah. in many cases because you had uh, San Jose State frustrated defensively in the post. Tonight, Devin Christensen was visibly angry at times. You took them off their game tonight. How were you able to do it defensively? Uh, you know, they, they scored a lot of points, but like you said, I thought we did a good job defensively. A lot of those threes that they made, the game was pretty much decided. You know, the pen, we stepped up and closed it at the free throw line, which is outstanding for us. But no, I, I, I just think we did a great job. I can't analyze this thing. I don't know. I'm, you know, we go from averaging 57 points a game for the last 10 games to averaging 95 points a game in this weekend. So I like the way we're playing. I like the offense. The kids are having fun. You know, we're 11 and 14. We won our fifth game. 
hey, what the heck, you know, just go, I just told him, just go out and play, you know, we got nothing to lose right now, let's go out and have a good time, I think the future looks good, I think our, our veterans are playing well, uh, I just, I'm happy for our kids, because they really deserve this thing, they, re they really earned it, and eventually, you know, this is the way we want to play, this is the way we want to play next year, I want to play like, you know, they, Utah State does a great job, Jerry does an awesome job, he's a great coach, and this is how we want to play, and we came this close to knocking them off twice, you know that, you were there, mm -hmm. we came this close to knocking them off twice, oh. With his brother Maz in the stands, who, by the way, at halftime told us he would beat you in a game of one-on-one. -on -one. Mark Track's team puts up 106 <laughs> points tonight, and they take down the first-place team in the WAC. Coach, go celebrate it with your team. Uh, they, I, I, he beat me HRRC and nothing. Those who can't do teach, so I teach. <laughs> New Mexico State a winner, 106-94 to tonight. Abby Scott, the freshman, a big night, 16 points as the Aggies upset the first-place team in the WAC. Dreaming of something better? We can help. White Sands Federal Credit Union has auto loans with low rates and easy terms to help you get that car you've always dreamed of. See us today. We'll write you a check and make your dreams a reality too. Your New Mexico State men's basketball team is set to host I-10 rival UTEP at the Pan Am on Saturday, February 23rd at 7 p.m. This huge rivalry game is for regional supremacy. The game will be chock full of fun as the Panamaniacs will be out in full force. Piano Juggler will perform at halftime. Aggies versus Miners Saturday, February 23rd at 7 p.m. Tickets start at just $8, so get your tickets today by visiting the Pan Am Center ticket office or calling 575-646-1420. Sponsored by El Paso Electric and the Las Cruces Bulletin. Are you in the market for a vehicle? Head over to Danny Gamboa's Casa de Autos. Casa de Auto sells quality vehicles following three steps. They certify their vehicles through a 40-point inspection service. They own the bank, so financing is easy. After you purchase your vehicle from Casa de Autos, they'll continue to help you. Customers of Casa de Autos have been happy for the last 33 years. So come down to Casa de Autos, enjoy your experience, and find what you've been looking for. Casa de Autos is located in the big yellow building on Amador, five blocks south of Solano. Time for the New Mexico State Aggie baseball team to take the field and defend their WAC championship. New Mexico State baseball opening day is Saturday, February 9th. Grab your season tickets today for only $49. Call 646-1420 for your New Mexico State baseball season tickets. New Mexico State baseball, it's time. New Mexico State women's basketball on a hot streak now is back in action next Saturday, February 23rd against future WAC foe Cal State Bakersfield. Tip-off is set for 4 o'clock. For ticket information, visit Ticketmaster.com or call 646-1420. New Mexico State, a 106 to 94 win. Abby Scott, the freshman, 16 points tonight, one of five in double figures for New Mexico State. The former New Mexico standout Melanie Veramontes with us courtside now and Melanie. Where did that come from? It's the most points New Mexico State has scored since 1982. How do they do it? Well, we've always said that once they got their shooting online, the Aggies would be contenders, and they have shown that tonight and on last, last Thursday night. They did a good job shooting well. It is a pretty view from the court tonight presented by Southwestern Ice Center as New Mexico State, a season high, 106 points, 13 three-point shots made, and early on, Kelsey Rosendahl, just one three-pointer made for her tonight, but she has her second straight double-double. Well, Kelsey Rosendahl, I felt, was going to be one of the turning points for this game because she did not play up in Utah when they saw this team the first time around. I think she made a big difference, and you see here, she got those balls underneath that she wouldn't have gotten. 14 points, 12 rebounds for her. Stephanie Gilbert, a career-high 27 points, another double-double for her as she has 11 rebounds. Denasia Williamson, consecutive double-doubles. There with the assists, she had 10 of those. 23 points and 10 assists for Denasia Williamson. She had it going in all facets of her game tonight. And she really, over these last couple of games, has played her very, very best of her career. And that's why New Mexico State has won back-to-back -back games in big fashion. Williamson has shown the kind of point guard that she can be and continue to be for this Aggie squad. She did a great job running the, running the show, telling people where to go, directing traffic. She was really a, a good, stable person to run this team tonight. We get a look at the view from the court presented to you by Southwestern Ice Center. Defense created offense tonight. 
for New Mexico State as we take a look at the final numbers. 106 points tonight. The Aggies for the third game in a row shoot 40% or better from the field. They were trailed in the rebounding department in the first half, and they took care of it when Utah State turned it over. They did a great job forcing those turnovers, and they scored on those turnovers. But I think one thing that New Mexico State did well also is that they had more than three people scoring. I think they had nine people scoring. They had a lot of points from the bench, and I think that was one of the big differences here tonight. 106 points for New Mexico State, led by 27, a career high for the senior. The transfer from USC, Stephanie Gilbreth. Denasia Williamson, the sophomore with 23, and the freshman, Abby Scott, with 16. In all, five players for New Mexico State scoring in double figures. And now all of a sudden, after New Mexico State breaking that eight-game losing streak with the victory over San Jose State on Thursday, are now on back-to-back -back victories and are all of a sudden one of the hottest offensive teams in the WAC. Well, they did so great shooting well. I think they're going to continue on this in this fashion. But Abby Scott, I mean, she really is what put this team up over the edge. And then she continued to shoot well throughout the game to allow everybody else to come up. It was the third double-figure game of the season for Abby Scott. Back-to-back -back games for the freshman to go over the double-figure mark. She was 6 of 11 from the field and made four three-pointers. She's made nine now in back-to-back -back games. So New Mexico State... All of a sudden, the hottest offensive team in the WAC winning tonight 106 to 94. Be sure to join us for our next Aggie Vision telecast Tuesday, February 19th, when Aggie softball takes on the New Mexico Lobos at 5 o'clock. Tonight's production was a co production of students and staff at New Mexico State University. On behalf of the talented students on our crew, as well as Melanie Viramontes, I'm Jay Sanderson. Thanks so much for watching. Once again, New Mexico State takes down the first place team in the WAC, beating Utah State 106 to 94. Good night from a very happy Las Cruces. We play for the name across our chest. We play for the honor of victory. And the agony of defeat. We play with respect for each other. The officials. And our fans. We play with respect for our competitors, schools, and communities. We play for the integrity of our sport. And the spirit of competition. We play together. We play to lead. We play for respect. But most of all, we play for you. The Western Athletic Conference. Play up. Voyage continues. Highway 45. Friday, March 8th in Legends Theater at Route 66 Casino Hotel. An unforgettable night of the Moody Blues iconic hits performed live. For tickets, visit rt66casino.com or the casino box office. The Voyage continues. Highway 45. Exclusive casino sponsor of Lobo Sports. A university should not just be a place, it's a feeling. It's a feeling of pride, it's a feeling of belonging, it's a feeling of confidence that you are learning with the brightest minds for the best value. Forbes, U.S. News and World Report, Washington Monthly, and the Carnegie Foundation agree that New Mexico State University offers world-class education, yet embraces you with personal attention. We don't just offer excellence, we help you lay your path to it. At the end of the day, you can't fool people. Nothing sells like the truth. From our fresh pack sauce, to our fresh veggies, to our 100% fresh dough, never frozen. At Papa John's, we believe fresh is better. Nobody does, but Papa John's does. Right now, Papa John's is giving you all large pizzas for just $11 each. Even specialty pizzas, only $11. Order now at PapaJohns.com. Everything's better when Papa's in the house. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. <laughs> After a season-high 90 points on Thursday against San Jose State, the Aggies will be looking to continue the scoring spree tonight as first place Utah State comes to town hoping to avoid the upset. It's a battle of the Aggies next on Aggie Vision.
It's been six